Greetings summoners and fellow gamers, I'm Embedder Saev and I'm here to bring you my thoughts on the patch 1.0.0139 for League of Legends. Now this patch is being called the spectator mode patch instead of the Barris patch because as you probably know Barris was not released and was pushed to a later date. Now the way this is going to work I'm going to be reading the patch notes and I will just be skipping on the things I, I don't find very interesting and I'll just focus on the things that are interesting to me and what I think of, of, of them. Now the first thing you see in the patch notes is the spectator mode. They finally released this mode and it's an extremely great uh, advance here in League of Legends because for the longest time we were always limited by the, the ways we could watch matches which was mostly through YouTube or the third party program LOL Replay but the spectator mode it brings us an extremely nice look at how the uh, hopefully later on the replay system from Riot is going to work but for now we'll have to uh, just live with this and this is actually the extremely good good patch here just because of this. Now uh, one of the main features they put here is that you can spectate your friends, anyone on your friend list. You can go and watch the game they're playing uh, at that particular moment and that's extremely cool because instead of just waiting for your friends to like end the game and you're just chatting with them, you can go right in there and see how they're doing and how uh, long it's gonna probably take them to finish. So this is pretty pretty cool thing uh, just because of that now, the other thing they're doing is they're giving you featured games. This is this is actually very interesting because uh, sometimes they're gonna put like high elo players right on the main page, and you can just go watch them and and well see how they play and, and how they're doing. Now, the, the thing that I find the most interesting in the whole spectator mode thing is the this thing called the directed camera. Now I've I've seen a couple of games uh, as an expect spectator and I I can sure I can assure you that this is a, an extremely in interesting and well made uh, feature here because you you never miss the action I I've just sit back and you can just watch the game unfold and and everything on screen is always action. Uh, even when they're like in, in the lane phase and someone uh, does a little bit of harassment, your, the camera automatically moves there, and you can watch that that action unfold. And now I I believe that this this is um, very unique to League of Legends. Hopefully, uh, this will be implemented in other games. But uh, for now, I believe this is uh, very unique to them. Now the one of the things that I do li I really like about this uh, also is that you can turn this off of course anytime you want and just follow a, a champion in particular you're interested in or just like roam yourself around the map as, as you were playing. Um, and like I said, uh, I I've watched many many replays. I mean, spectated many games where I just like leave the 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 director direct camera uh, do its thing, and it, it's very interesting, especially later on in the game when an action is going on all over the map. Now, the other thing that you can do, you can also rewind, and pause, and, and slow and speed up the the footage you have seen on the on the map. So this is this is uh, what you would usually. Think of of being like the minimum thing you can do with Spectre mode, so it, it it's there and it's and it works. It works very well. Now you also have a complete UI re, uh, remade for the Spectre mode. Maybe some of us uh, have used it on custom uh, custom games before. And right here, um, well, it 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 works very well. It gives you all the information you need to know, like the the deaths and kills, assist. The items people are sporting, the, the medium score also, the minions they've killed, and um, I believe their gold gain uh, throughout the game. That's also the other thing you can see there. And that's pretty much it for spectator mode. I, I believe this is the biggest b biggest thing on this patch, so that's why I, I talked about it mo uh, more than hopefully, hopefully the rest. Now here we go. The well, the, we also got two new skins here: Frostblade Aurelia and Rune Wars Renekton. I haven't seen them in game yet, but uh, they seem pretty nice on the splash screens there. Now let's see here. We got general PvP.net things. The uh, 
uh, I don't believe any of those are interesting. Oh, the only one I, I really do find interesting is that you, you have to be level 5 summoner to speak on the public chat rooms. And I do believe this was needed because the spamming was getting way out of hand. And this is going to be a good change. Now let's see, uh, PvP, PvP store. Uh, we really need to see that. Okay, so here we go. The, speaking of the champion changes, we got Alistar. Now this is this is this is something they talked about in the patch preview. The champions Alistar, Amumu, Leona, Tarek, and Nunu, I believe, they now gain magic resist per level, and this is because they were getting. Uh, since these are champions that really require a lot of a lot of gold, and they usually don't get this amount of gold. Uh, the items they need later on to be able to initiate or just stay in the battle uh, weren't there. They, they couldn't get them, so they're giving this them, this buff to them where they do gain magic resist per level, and it's a very significant amount on magic resist, so you can survive uh, AOEs and team fights later on. Now that's a change they did to Alistar. Then you got Amumu. Besides the magic resist per level, he gets a cooldown reduce on his ultimate, which is which is uh, very helpful for him. He's as is as people who play Amumu know. Amumu is uh, the a good Amumu player is all about the ultimate. When you use your ultimate, on who you use your ultimate, the positioning you have in order to use it. So the you having your a uh, lower cooldown on your ultimate is is really a very significant buff on Amumu. From there we go to Annie. Uh, I believe Annie also has. Um, it's it's a very nice uh, buff here. She gets a health increase at level one from 424 to 460. This is always good. I mean, having be better uh, health at, at the beginning of the game, it's always always a plus. And also, she's getting a, a cost reduction on her mana on her incinerate, which is also very good. She is getting. Uh, a buff and putting on more online with other AP casters where they have a uh, less mana cost on their abilities which is the, the what we can see in the newest AP champions most of them have very good AP rate uh, MP ratios I mean the mana they need to it's very low usually then we got she's getting a, a slight rework on her molten shield now it, it, it can be activated more often but it lasts much much less and the mana cost is also lowered and more magic resist and armor from it so overall it's a buff and I believe this is this is not gonna be like game changing for Annie but uh, at least you can charge up your stun faster with the lower cooldown on the shield then we got Blitzcrank, nothing interesting here just playing tips now this is this one's good Chogat got a slight increase in his movement speed from 315 to 320 this is this is very good as as you know, if you play Cho'gath, being able to to catch up to someone and feast on them is uh, one of the most important parts of him. So having a slightly better movement speed is very interesting. Now we got here Doctor Mundo. Now uh, I believe since Doctor Mundo has is getting a lot of popularity lately, he got a, a very harsh nerf here. I believe he got his burning agony nerf, which was the thing that made his jungle so fast and so strong. And also what made him a, a beast later on. So the damage was re was uh, cut by by five percent at at max level and f five damage per each level. So that's uh, that's the first nerf they get. Then the crowd crowd reduction also got nerfed by five percent. And also uh, they it, they put it here. They talked about it as being like a kind of a of a, a, a buff per se that it has a short cooldown once you activate it because they don't want you to accidentally disable it but I, I don't think this is actually good because it was very nice when you could just uh, activate it real quick and then turn it off so you can do quick damage to getting a min uh, last hit on a minion or something like that so hopefully this is not gonna affect uh, this this strategy and also your ultimate sadism got nerfed again by uh, increasing the cooldown to 75 seconds from 65 so this is actually the, the, the biggest nerf on him on him, he a few months ago he his ultimate got nerfed. I believe it was from 50 seconds, and now it's all the way up to 75. So Mundo's getting hit hard here. Then we got Irelia. Now Irelia is a very interesting buff here because, as you know, on the previous patch she got nerfed on her lane sustain, and right now she has she has been given more health uh, at base health 
more health per level, more health regen and damage increase also. So she's getting a very very strong buff on her to her early game. This might not seem that in that that big of a buff, but it it is very helpful to her to her. Um and it's going to help her a lot. We're going to probably see more Aurelia players again even though she was never really hit uh, the last nerf although it was harsh she was still very strong pick and with this well a lot of people gonna look at her again and probably play her more now we got a small um, small fix on Jax that it seems they have a, there was a bug that counter strike stun was was going through spell shield so this is just fixing that that shouldn't be happening then we got a small um, nerf to Kogma slow on his boydus I believe this is necessary because his his slow was so strong and and it was very uh if pl placed and the correct um uh, the correct um when throwing it in the correct uh, cor uh, direction the slow was extremely strong and could destroy uh, uh the enemy team in a team fight if it was placed correctly or if you're fighting like in a jungle or something like that the slow is always very strong um uh, overall, I don't think it's going to be a big change. It's going to be played the same and it's going to be very effective still. Now, we got Lee Sin here again. He was uh, nerfed. Uh, pretty much every patch you can see a Lee Sin nerf here. His Iron Will, Lifesteal, and Spell Bamp got reduced. And also, the cooldown on his shield got uh, up by one second. So, this is actually a pretty hard nerf to him. Uh, slowly, every, every uh, one of his skills has been hit hard. And this is just... Uh, doing more of more of the same um, then we got okay so we got Lulu here she got a slight adjustment uh, now she has a lower ability power ratio on her glitter lands and also they increased uh, the mana cost on it on later on later ranks so she couldn't spam it that much I believe this change is pr pretty justified uh, that's not a big change for for Lulu unless you play her like an AP carry but I don't see that very often then we got okay, so Master G, Master G, is one of the champions that was mentioned on the on the patch preview. Uh, I believe that G really needs to buff, uh, buff like they they did right here. He's man meditate got a cost reduction on the mana, and that that's that's not really a big deal. But the buff to the Highlander is very good actually. Right now, um, they changed the duration from at, at rank. 1 and rank 2 from 6 and 9 to 8 and 10 so that's 2 seconds on the level 1 and 1 second on the level 2 and this is very good because uh, G is very dependent on his ultimate to be able to be uh, to be very effective without his ultimate he is extremely uh, weaker than other other champions that fill a similar role so this is a good a good buff, I believe. Uh, hopefully, we'll see more G players around, and I still think that he needs uh, more buffs, and maybe nerf his APG. That when you play APG, you should nerf some of these of that things and, and completely turn him into the AD powerhouse we we know and love when he's fed. We you need we need to to balance that out more so he can be very much more effective without so many items. Now from here we go to Misfortune. Now this is very interesting. They they changed her ultimate uh, damage from magic to physical to physical, and this is actually extremely extremely important because now uh, now your whole kit pretty much does physical damage except your um, make it rain, and and this is good when fighting um, certain champions that that for example if in the top lane they build to counter magic resist because they were fighting rumble or something like that at least now your ultimate is not countered by do those decisions in the items they build so now you truly are um, an AD carry that has most it, most of his skills do physical damage so this is good for her and also the there it has a, it has a small uh, damage increase to her double up on the sing secondary target so that's that's also a very good uh, good buff for her now we're going to Nunu, a small change, just added range indicators on his ultimate and like I said the magic resist per level he got. And we got then we go to Olaf. Olaf got a small uh, nerf here. He's his reckless swing got cooldown got increased by one second at all ranks. So th this I believe this was needed because later on he, the true damage is one of the most important uh, aspects uh, in the game, one of the most the strongest um, 
some damage types as, as it is true damage and having it on such a co low cooldown and I believe it's like 320 at, at level 5 and having it every, every 4 seconds I believe that was a, a little bit too much so uh, I believe this, this nerf was justified now we got to Rice. Now Rice got a very a harsh uh, rework here, and it, it, in general, it was meant to be a nerf to him because he was very, very, being very tanky later on and able to do so much damage. So they reduced this quite a bit, lowering lowering the mana ratio on all of his abilities, and uh, adding a little bit more uh, ability power ratio to, to all of them. So they're trying to to mix him more. Uh, put him more in line with other AP carries, but still maintain some of his his tankiness. Now he he can still be built as he was built before, and I think this is gonna be all still the most effective build on him. But now at least you can do more variations of it. And uh, they did, like I said, it's pretty much the same r rice we know. Um, it's just has a little bit less mana ratios and more AP ratios. But the, they changed their, his ultimate to now give, instead of mana per level, it gives movement speed when activated. So this is a, a decent change. Uh, Rice does need that movement speed to get close to people and do his combos and stuff. So this, I believe this is good. Now, from here we go to Cinch. Cinch got a slight uh, buff. He got uh, his, health, his base health um, increased a little bit. Then we got Sivir. Sivir also got the Q damage on her, the ratio on her Q, uh, a little bit increased from one to one point one. This is good as Sivir. <coughs> uh, the Q is one of Sivir's strongest, uh, most unique abilities, I believe, and and having it a little bit higher ratio doesn't hurt. Now we go. Okay, we got Soraka here. She got a, a slight, slight nerf. Uh, on her star call now it it only reduces the by five seconds instead of eight seconds the magic resist of the enemies and also she got a cost reduced uh, increase on her mana so this is a nerf to her and the armor bonus when healing also got nerfed quite significantly is 20 less armor at rank five. And this this is gonna really be be hurtful to Soraka because this is one of her strongest points here, being able to heal someone and, and completely buff them for the duration. Now let's see here, uh, a small buff to Talon, mana reduce, mana cost reduced on his rake, and also base armor increased a little bit. Slight nerf on Odir, Odir shield. Uh, I do believe that this was necessary since. Uh, Deer has such a spammable shield, and <clears throat> and if example you had top lane with Deer, he will be unstoppable uh, versus some some setups, and this was mostly due to his shield being up all the time, pretty much. Now we got another nerf to uh, no, Warwick. Warwick has been hit hard lately. He his hungry strike now is re the damage percentage is reduced to 16 from 20. This is an extremely big uh, nerf on him. Hopefully uh, it wasn't that harsh, we'll, we'll have to see later on how, how he's treated. But I do believe it was something like this was needed because as same as Udir, when he was versus certain certain uh, team compositions, he was he was just extremely strong. Um, okay, so pretty much th those are the champion changes and um, we're now gonna talk about the the most important part of is the item changes here. They, they trying to do something very, very important here. Uh, most AP carries have pretty much one build, and then that's to either rush to wield the ancients and then get a deathfire grasp, and that's pretty much your core build. And from there, you can get a void staff, for example. Uh, they're they're trying to di di diversify this by. G giving you better options. For example, here the, the Deathfire Grasp is gonna get, uh, uh, in my opinion, it's a buff here. It now has a longer cast range, and this, and also has better um, AP scaling on the on the percentage of max health damage it does, and also has higher ability power um, damage on it. So uh, I do believe this is a, a good buff to Deathfire Grasp, and I I see it, I see it being used on some champions, uh, on more champions because uh, one of the things they wanted to do here they actually re remove the the 
mana per five seconds it, it added so right now it's actually a viable choice on mana less um, champions such as cannon and Vladimir for example so I do see this being used more often now on those type of champions from there on we also got the uh, a slight reduction on other and gold on other items and a slight rework on Morello's evil tone now it, it builds off lucky pick and fringes <clears throat> Fiendish Codex, and the cool thing about it is now it applies Grieving Wounds, and this is gonna free up people who had to take uh, <clears throat> Ignite in order to get this this debuff for the enemy. Now you can get this, and it actually uh, allows you to build other types of items. Uh, oh, we got a, a, a the Sunfire Cape damage was was increased to 40, and this was pretty much. And putting it back on how it was a few months ago, it, it, it was nerfed and now it's getting ba back to its original state, so that's good. Now here's one pa one thing I didn't like, they nerfed Wheel of the Ancients, the damage it's still the same, it's still the same item but just cost more. It's cost 400 more gold and I do believe this was not not that good of a change, I, I, b because the other things they, they, they changed, I do believe they should have left this like, like it was. It was su such a good item, a core item on so, on so, so many champions. And I believe th those are the changes for this patch, the most important ones, um, in my opinion. The <clears throat> Hopefully you like this this little uh, insight into the patch notes. Hopefully you didn't uh, get bored of my ramblings. And uh, Well, I'll see you around, guys. Uh, I would like to thank everyone for watching and invite you to subscribe to Ace Games if you haven't for much more video gaming content. As you probably know, we're currently uploading videos from, from videos games here and please leave us in the comments which uh, games you're interested in the most and we'll try our best to cover them. And as a last note, I would like to also invite you to visit my channel over at youtube.com slash if you like this video. I do daily uploads of League of Legends point of view commentaries about the champions you're interested in, so please go there and check them out. This will be all from me, until the next time, uh, thanks for watching, please comment, rate and subscribe, have a great day.